Rookie minicamps are the name of the game across the National Football League. In Detroit, there seems to be some controversy, Bloom, because, well, Jameer Gibbs is missing time. And then you've got their rookie tight end, who we all were shocked that they took. Uh, but now Sam Laporta is starring at camp, saying the best player on the field, according to beat writers uh, at Lions Rookie Minicamp. So I guess Sam Laporta now, and with the suspension, <laughs> you mm -hmm. could look at um, him as the, what, the number two target yeah. in this offense? Yeah, well, and remember, players' roles will grow or shrink to their level of proficiency, assuming a good organization with rational coaching. And I think we have that in Detroit. I know people don't think they drafted rationally. I would disagree. That's another show. Actually, we, I would totally we already did that show. Yeah. Uh, look. Uh, Colton Pouncey from The Athletic, uh, he was one of the beat writers who said, Sam Laporta, clearly the best player on the field. And I know it's rookie mini camps and everybody says that. But that's what you want to hear, okay? If we were going to say, what's the story where Sam Laporta defies rookie tight end expectations, where Sam Laporta, as he was at Iowa, Thor Nystrom on the couch telling us, Without Sam Laporta, Iowa might have had one of the worst power five offenses in the last 25 years. He was the offense. So now you put him in an offense. And what's Ben Johnson doing here? Positionless football. We love saying that. I think we're getting there. I think we're at with Sam Laporta, where you can line him up. Jameer Gibbs, where you can line him up. Jamison mm -hmm. Williams. And man, Amon Ross St. Brown, he also lines up at different places. So now you have the ability to put any set of 11 personnel, uh, 11 defensive players in a mismatch. Somebody's not going to be able to match up with their guy. So I think the bottom line here, Cease, is the Detroit offense, which was hyper efficient last year, can take another step this year. And Sam Laporta, if he's going to be an impact player. If he's going to be somebody who is going to be a top five fantasy football tight end for the next eight, 10, 12 years, well, the story would start, boy, he looks like the best player on the field. Yeah. And we see that clear vision from the Detroit Lions and Matt I rant, Please. Sigmund, is that okay? You they always, like it. I always get up when I'm yeah. around you. I'm just like, I, the energy's yeah. up. The energy, sorry, Joe Plus for the other stuff. But anyway. We all got to stop with this stupid, like, oh, it's a rookie minicamp. What do you think you're going to see type of stuff? You want to see good things. I get some of that pushback on my Broncos rookie minicamp stuff, and I'll get to Marvin Mims Jr., the Broncos' best wide receiver, by the way. I'll get to that in a little bit. But, like, we got to stop with this, Bloom, because there's these ignorant takes out there, like, well, that's, what are you going to see? Well, do you want a, a bad report? <laughs> you want that, okay, right? right? Would you, how would you like that? It's always good when these players match their film. It's always good when they can splash and they can show these signs. It doesn't mean it's the completed puzzle. It doesn't mean Sam Laporta is going to be a superstar. It just means, you know what? What he showed on film is how he shows in person, and the Lions have to be encouraged by that. And I think we all need to have the radar up for those type of news yeah, reports. Yeah, and look, we get out of rookie minicamp uh, reports about how players are being used. That's important. We get reports about new coaches. We could talk about Eric Bieniemy in Washington and what we're hearing over there. And see, I guess there used to be a time when we started back at Football Guys way back when that there was an information edge. In fantasy football, you could get an information edge if you were listening to the right people. Well, there's no information edge in terms of access to information, in terms of availability of information. If anything, we have too much information. And then the information edge becomes knowing which information is relevant or which information is something you should at least note and monitor further. So if people out there are saying, ignore this, I don't care about what happens in training camp. I don't care what happens in preseason games. I don't care what coaches say. I don't care what players say. Good, good. Let people put that out there because the new information edge is knowing which information matters. And beat writers are, especially the drum beat, and people try to give me credit that, but I always say Cecil came up with the drum beat. When beat writers are saying, when everybody is saying somebody is the best player on the field and standing out as a polished player, because hey, some of these guys came to rookie mini camp and look good, but they were winded. They still had conditioning issues or there were other things, good and bad. When it's all good, at least again, says monitor further worth monitoring.
Yeah, and the Jameer Gibbs thing, I saw some headline, the clickbait that was like, the Lions, disaster. I'm like, eh, it's Gibbs being a little bit banged up yeah. and they're being yeah. careful with him. Yes. I don't care Same about that. Same thing with Witherspoon. So, yeah, I, I, I'm excited right. to see what this Lions team is going to bring. We had the schedule release. They're going to get some primetime games. And th- th- this is an exciting time. And for fantasy football, again, why should you be interested most of all? Because this is a hyper-efficient offense. And we can get off the trail when we think, well, if you divide the pie up five ways or how can it be possibly be better than last year? Yeah, when you have Jameson Williams oh, for 11 games, when you have Sam Laporta, when you have David Montgomery who adds value, over DeAndre Swift, when you have Jameer Gibbs, when you have them being able to realize the vision. Remember this also. This is the second year in Ben Johnson's offense. The second year. What happens in the second year? You're fluent. Now we really understand the concepts. Now we can have some fun. Yeah, now you take off. You love Dan Campbell, yeah. Bloom. I love yeah. you. You love me too, and we love our audience here on the Audible, but I have to say, I, I think I love Arthur Smith. Mm. Arthur. That's a Harry Met Sally mm. reference for everybody <laughs> out there. <laughs> Arthur, um, he told Bijan Robinson he's going to do a bit yeah. of everything. And we love Bijan Robinson. The, again, more ignorant takes like, never take a running back in the top two, do, do, do. Like, Bijan Robinson isn't necessarily a running back. He's a football playing Jesse. Like, just move him around, get him to do whatever. So, uh, here we go again, um, a very talented rookie, kind of maybe spilling the beans a little bit, or at least telling us to watch for the spilt yeah. beans on terms of where he's going to be used, which bloom is everywhere. Yeah, don't cry over spilt beans. Uh, look, this is another situation where fantasy football is about making decisions with incomplete information. That's what we do in fantasy football. And yes, B's Ron Robinson is a rookie who hasn't played a down of NFL regular season football yet. Is it crazy to take him in the first round of your redraft league? No, not crazy. Not at all crazy. Is it crazy to rank him as the number one dynasty running back? Cecil. Cecil Lammy, my dear friend. Is there a running back you would rather have than B. John Robinson in a dynasty league right now? No. No. So we have a team that runs the ball efficiently. We have a team that is surging. Also, and this affects Drake London. This affects Kyle Pitts. Yes, we had an offense with Marcus Mariota passing-wise. Volume was horrid. Efficiency was horrid. And you might say, well, we shouldn't assume that Arthur Smith is going to be single-minded about the run. Maybe he was single-minded about the run last year because he looked at what he had. and He said, well, this is what we can do. This is, this is what we can do with this team. We can run the ball and hope that Marcus Mariota can make a throw when we set him up. Desmond Ritter, you saw the pass attempts actually go up when Desmond Ritter came in. Now you have an entire offseason. You have offensive line that's gelling. You have these skill players. Again, where is it the easiest place? Where's the easiest place? Grammatically, that didn't work out well. To get gains in fantasy football. It's not necessarily a player getting vacated targets or carries or what have you it's when an offense gets better when the whole pie gets bigger you can have the same slice but it's more pie so atlanta yeah more pie and Bijan robinson is going to be serving us that pie he's going to be doing a little bit of everything marvin mims jr made my ankles hurt on saturday as i was watching broncos rookie mini camp and i was like i'm not even moving <laughs> just standing here uh but watching that kid run after the catchability him and riley moss going at Ooh. each other that was fantastic to watch riley moss he's got a little bit of a mullet like me i know i got my mm. beanie on bloom but i'm I, my hair is my hair is getting mm. there it's getting there baby like it's it's for sure there so riley moss the corner from iowa making plays but marvin mims jr is the discussion point bloom because i think he's the best receiver on the team he's not as good of a route runner as jerry judy but man he's fast and Sutton's not fast and Timmy Pats is not fast. Like we just have to be honest. And the great thing about Sean Payton, no logos on the helmets. And it's not like a, you got to earn your logo. It was just a, Hey, anyone can make it. He talked about Pierre Thomas and how, when they had drafted Antonio Pittman, they got Pierre Thomas undrafted. And in camp, you saw immediately like with no logos, like just the names on the helmets, like, Oh, that kid can play. That other kid is a little rough. And I think Pittman played what, like right. a year in the league, something like that. So like with Mims, 
this isn't any sort of hierarchy like Sutton's been there and Timmy Pats has been there and Judy was the nope. You can play, you can play. And the biggest X factor in this Broncos situation is Jerry Judy's mentality. Mm -hmm. If he's not the number one receiver, he checks out. He's not going to be the number one receiver because they're going to move everybody around the formation. Look at what we're talking about today in the positionless right. football and people moving around. Marvin Mims can attack in the slot. Can't give away too right. much, Bloom. But he can attack from the slot. He can take short passes into long gains with that sickness and the quickness. And he also can work on the outside as a deep threat because of that speed. And certainly, even on a run-heavy offense like the Broncos should have this year, will be someone to monitor. Absolutely. And again... What are we paying attention to? Oh, boy, Cease. We've got the long, empty time. Yeah, there'll be OTAs and stuff, but we got about two months until training camp start, and we really have some stuff to dig our teeth into after the draft gave us some stuff to dig our teeth into. But what are we monitoring? Changes. David Bowie, right? Q David Bowie. Changes. Mm. And, yeah, there's a... Was that Ziggy or was that David huh? Bowie? That was Ziggy, that? right? That was Ziggy. Changes. David Bowie is Ziggy Stardust. That was not actually from... Was Ziggy I don't think that was from Ziggy Stardust and Spiders Mars. I can't remember the exact album that's from. I think it was a little bit after that. But okay. either way, because there's a lot of different periods of David Bowie. Yeah, there's the Thin White Duke period. There's And aren't they all... They're wonderful? all pretty incredible. He was a uh, an alien, and uh, he graced us with his presence for a while. And maybe he will again. Uh, look... I would love to talk more about David Bowie and uh, life on Mars. <laughs> Sorry, Joe yeah. Plus. Uh, but I, I think that, again, changes. There's going to be a lot of changes. We already know from a lot of the personnel moves that the Broncos are going to have the run is going to be the, the outward facing uh, mode for this offense. But it, doesn't it make sense then to emphasize the deep passing game, play action passing off of the run? That's Marvin Mims. And that's the guy that this regime chose. OK, that's the guy that this regime brought in. Now, the, this regime also gave Jerry Judy a fifth year option and, and they did commit. George Payton committed to Tim Patrick. That's actually looking like a good move. Uh, but could Marvin Mims be the most valuable fantasy receiver? Absolutely. This year, this year, Marvin Mims could be the most valuable fan. Now, that might make you say take a step back from Russell Wilson. That's OK, because if Marvin Marvin Mims is the most valuable fantasy receiver with a line of like. 45 for 850 and and six touchdowns or something like that uh because right. because we're we're gonna see how patrick and sutton and judy shake out in this offense and the other thing i think because it's dynasty time and rookie draft time is we have we can't get too wedded to how these players fit in the depth chart today or this year tyler scott comes to right. mind right josh downs comes to mind right these mm -hmm. players Okay, wh where are they going to be in year two, year three, in terms of dynasty value? They might be Jalen Hyatt, who just signed yeah. with the Giants. Yeah. yeah. So this is the guy that Sean Payton wanted. This is the guy that fits what they're trying to do. He gave us clues of what they're trying to do, including the clues from Cecil, who can't say too much because, well, you know, doesn't want to get locked out of Broncos practices. But if you listen, you might hear the whoop, whoop. But uh, Marvin Mims. Yeah, this is the guy they wanted, and for a good reason, as you need someone to run under those Russell Wilson moon balls. Matt Waldman is, uh, he's a glorious he soul, right? I mean, just beautiful. A merry old soul. So, yes, as I was talking to him about Jaleel, Jaleel McLaughlin, mm. the undrafted rookie from Youngstown State, who was the all-time college football leading rusher of all time, uh, who's now with the Broncos as an undrafted free agent. He said he's Philip Lindsay with right. hands. Well, I'm here to report not only Marvin Mims was said, by the way, Drew Sanders. I know it's not a defensive show, Bloom, but Drew Sanders. Oh, my God. That kid mm. can play. Um, but Jaleel McLaughlin, everybody remember the name. Everybody know the name, because if he gets a small crease, he's gone. Absolutely gone. Can flat out fly. And I saw him make a spinning catch near the sideline that I don't think Jerry Judy could make. So McLaughlin, a little sure. piggyback on the Mims thing. Like, and, and again, with Sean Payton, it's just a name on your helmet. Like Jaleel McLaughlin made an early impression. He could be the Broncos' number three running back. And again, positionless, positionless football sees. How about just their speed merchant? How about just somebody that you put on the field to add speed? And I think that the game is changing. Again, we can go back to the olden days when we started this. 
they were still knocking on quarterbacks because they hadn't taken snaps under center because they were operating exclusively out of the shotgun. You don't really hear that anymore, right? The game has changed. Right. And a lot of these players, BMI or running backs under a certain height or weight, oh, you can't make an impact. The rules are changing, okay? Yeah, you give me a guy, a 5'9", 175 guy, no, you're not going to give him the ball on fourth and inches, okay? Unless you're going to use the speed, right? Actually, you can. My point is there's room in offenses for these players, and there's room in fantasy football for these players to matter. And in the Broncos backfield specifically, okay, Smosh P. Ryan's good. We'll see about Javante Williams. I, I'm, kind, I'm in a kind of, I've heard enough. I'll believe it when I see it. I, I, I want right. hard information now, not just people saying, when well, he'll be ready this time. We don't know when he'll be ready. Maybe he'll be ready this time. I, I, I just want to, when he's out on the field, I'll know he's back out on the field. Uh, but McLaughlin absolutely can carve out some sort of role. See, so I'm thinking of Keaton Mitchell, too. Uh, for the Ravens, Mm -hmm. you know, these speed Mm -hmm. backs who have some chops in the passing game, who can create mismatches. You know what sounds good? Jaleel McLaughlin on a wheel route. (laughs) Good luck. Good luck with that. So I think that we assume some rational coaching from Sean Payton. You bring in this element. And again, I'll give a nod to the Matt Waldman RSP when he said that uh, McLaughlin had the suddenness of an insect or a hummingbird. You can do things with a hummingbird in NFL offense. That's for damn sure. Uh, Ty J Spears, I kind of felt bad because he was kept ask, getting asked about his knee at rookie minicamp. He said, I'm healthy. Okay, yeah. And Ty J Spears, we know behind Eric Henry with the Titans, there's uh, some Alvin Kamara-like talent there. It's just how long does that knee hold up, Bloom? Uh, that's, a, that's a fair question for a, a lot of players, especially players who may or may not have an ACL. Right. Yeah. John Elway didn't have an ACL, by the way, his whole Heinz career. Ward. Heinz Ward didn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, I think that Spears, I'm not concerned as much about his knee. Now, their medical staff, they would not have taken him in the third round if their medical staff said his knee's not going to hold up through a rookie contract. I just right. don't. He'd now, I'm like not saying they're strong. He'd fell undrafted. Right. right. I'm not saying that they're right. I'm not saying that that take, the negative take on Spears' knee may end up being correct when the dust settles. However, uh, this is a team that needs something. So, you know, you, this is a glass half full, glass half empty fantasy football take. Because I, I think on the glass half full, you have, well, who else are you going to leverage in this offense other than Derrick Henry? That's it. And Derrick Henry, the offensive line, is not going to do him any favors. Again, the passing game is not going to do him any favors to get lighter boxes. Ryan Tannehill is not going to do him any favors at this point in his career. Will Levis isn't going to do him any favors. So you have to use Spears kind of by default. And then Derrick Henry's going to be a free agent next year. I, we'll see what happens. It's not that outlandish to think of Spears leading this backfield in touches. But is it going to be like a Damian Pierce leading the backfield in touches where there's flick, flickers, flashes of fantasy value, but nothing consistent. And then you know a year or two later, it's a different backfield. Because the other problem I have is, boy, this is going to be an atrocious offense. I, I just think this is going to be the worst offense in the NFL. I, mean, I, I don't know how this team is going to move the ball with what they have right now. So I like Spears, the player, a lot. I like his future opportunity. It's the surroundings, not the knee that bothers me. Uh, but I, I do think this is a player we're going to get to see early on in his career. Because if you are worried about his knee holding up, well, then get that value out of him right away. Let's talk about Jordan Addison impressing Kevin O'Connell saying he, quote, looks the part. And again, these are the things that you want to hear. Exactly. And Bloom, I hearken back to the day when mm. it was one a young shaver named Kenny Pickett who was yeah. peppering Addison with passes yeah. a bit. He didn't do as much at USC. Of course, they spread the ball around with Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams at quarterback. But like, no, that's I I I feel bad for Addison because I think the Vikings wanted somebody else. But I think the Vikings might be more than happy that they actually came up with Addison rather than, you know, a move up for C.J. Stroud or whatever. Right. I think you're right. Uh, We're hearing a lot that they were trying to move for a quarterback, as they should. Mm -hmm. Addison, and I'm going to go back to Matt Harmon. And look, we can look at Jackson Smith and Jigba and Zay Flowers and Quentin Johnston and Addison. And really, I think if you're picking where you get the fourth out of the four, you're fine. I mean, you got a value close to the first out of the four in terms of long-term fantasy range of outcomes. But with Addison, maybe the short term is going to be good too. And I'm going to harken back to 
uh, my couch interview with the great, my nephew, Matt Harmon. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it about the disparity in the numbers between Pitt and USC. And Matt said, well, USC, they were asking him to be an outside receiver and beat bigger, more formidable corners. And in Minnesota, they're going to use him the way they're using him more at Pitt is uncovering zone beating routes, uncovering quickly and being that compliment to Justin Jefferson. He said, basically what Minnesota is going to ask him to do is exactly what he's good at. So I think that's something important to keep in mind again, not just for dynasty values, but for rookie impact in redraft leagues. And like you said, Cease, this is a player they're going to be happy with because they had a ready-made role for him and a role that's going to help this offense stay efficient. It is the audible footballguys.com. Make sure to do all those YouTube things like comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you never miss a vid before we're out of here, Bloom. Yeah. Frank Reich said Bryce Young was in, quote, complete control, close quote, of the Panthers offense. Now, they're probably not doing much right now, but that's probably the least shocking headline <laughs> I yeah. can think of when it comes to Bryce Young who is incredibly bright and, well, has that leadership ability. It's why you take him number one overall. There's so much to like about Bryce Young. And again, I just like hearing that positive report coming out of rookie minicamp. Yeah, and isn't it going to be such a breath of fresh air for Frank Reich to work with Bryce Young yeah. compared to the quarterbacks he's been working with? Right. You know, uh, one foot in the grave, Matt Ryan and Carson Wentz. Uh, Colt Carson Wentz. Yeah. Eagles Carson Wentz was okay. Anyway, my point is, yeah, and I, I'm excited to see, again, see ch -ch -ch changes, changes at the top when it comes to head coach, offensive design, play calling, changes in personnel. And Bryce Young, now, while his fantasy value this year outside of super flex leagues is probably not going to be anything that excites us too much, what he could do for the value of Jonathan Mingo, what could he do for the value of Adam Thielen, what could he do for the value of Hayden Hurst, what could he do for the value of this whole offense? Not just an offense that's going to be like a, uh, a boxer with one fist like they were at times last year. And sometimes that fist, Dante Foreman, landed some punches. But now you have something resembling a balanced offense and a quarterback, like you said, Cease, that is advanced, that is in control, and is not going to look like a rookie when the bullets are flying. He's Sigmund Bloom. You follow him on Twitter, at Sigmund Bloom. I'm at C. Salami. The show is at The Audible. Again, we appreciate you so very much. So until next time, be safe, be kind, know that you are appreciated. Stay tuned, and as always, please stay frosty. 